This is Joe with Joe'sAstrophoto.com, and tonight we're capturing the Rosette Nebula. The Rosette Nebula lies about 5,000 light years away from the Earth. It's a, just a little north of the Orion Nebula, and tonight we're going to see if we can get it in hydrogen alpha, oxygen 3, and sulfur 2. I'm using narrowband imaging tonight because of how bright the moon's going to be, but I'm not going to let the bright moon stop me from getting uh, the narrowband imaging with a cloudless night. So the plan is, is to take some hydrogen alpha shots earlier in the night and some sulfur too. And then once the moon goes down, I think about 2 o'clock tonight, 2.30, then I'm going to squeeze in all the oxygen 3 shots I can in between then and when the sun comes up. Uh, the full moon is just too bright for the oxygen 3 filter and it washes it out pretty drastically. So I'm lucky in a sense that the moon's already out, it's been up for a while, and it should go down about 2. So that'll give me a good three hours of imaging with oxygen, and I'm going to take advantage of all of that. So the Rosette Nebula should be in a good position for me to do imaging from my location around 9.30 uh, local time this evening. In the meantime, about 7 p.m., I'm going to focus on IC405 for the night and just get a couple hours of um, narrow band imaging done on that as well uh, for a different project that I'm working on. And then I'll set up the sequence to start on the Rosette Nebula as soon as it's done with uh, IC405. The Rosette Nebula is my second target of the night and it's going to uh, be visible in my area about 921. So this is the way I have IC405 set up just until about 930. And I've got it set for uh, autofocus on start and on filter change. And I also have it set to start guiding, slew to target, and do a plate solve. So uh, around 9.30 um, it'll jump over to the Rosette Nebula and it'll finish at 5.06. I'll get 36 uh, hydrogen alpha, uh, 24 sulfur, and 24 oxygen. And I'll dither every frame at a gain of 200. And I'm also going to do the same. Uh, I'm going to autofocus on the start and on each filter change. So it's all set up, we're gonna get started. Six hours later. So it's about 1.40 a.m. in the morning here. Um, despite what the weather app said about being clear, it's pretty cloudy. Uh, I've been battling clouds all night, but I did manage to get a few good sub exposures. I just started taking the sulfurs and they're not bad. I did get some really nice hydrogen sub exposures in between the clouds. Uh, I'll put one up right here. So I am happy with that. Unfortunately though, I'm not going to be able to get enough sub exposures um, to complete my project in one night like I thought. So this might go into two or three nights. Unfortunately, the moon's getting brighter with each day and it's going down later in the night. So I'm not sure how I'm going to squeeze in those oxygen sub-exposures without the moon interfering. Okay, since we had a bust last night with all the clouds, I've got one more night to 
take some more hydrogen alpha exposures. I'm not going to get any oxygen exposures tonight because of the moon. It won't go down till 5 a.m. and it's just too bright to take oxygen. But we'll get some more hydrogen alpha and then I'll combine it with uh, the RGB image that I have now. Last night went well. It was really clear and I got the HA pictures that I needed to finish my project up. So I'll show you that in a minute. But I wanted to thank everyone for hanging out with me during this project. It, it was uh, took a lot longer than I thought it would because of the clouds. But I still got it done despite the moon and the clouds. So thanks for that and if you enjoy this content please hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.